Hi everybody, I hope you are doing well and enjoying the beautiful weather we've been having lately. I am very excited to show you this really simple tulips design and this was requested through the site. So I just wanna quickly thank you for that because I always love to hear what you'd like for workshops and just feedback that you offer. So on this design today, you'll notice that we're not using any black paint for our, our floral designs. And that's because we wanna make sure that our colors are nice and vibrant and we can have that spring theme and color scheme really showing. So I have a collection of just some regular paints here. I have some white, permanent rose, cadmium yellow, primary blue, and then a little bit of like this generic kind of emerald green color that I had in my studio. So I put these in the kits if you want to create your own teal or turquoise colors. And you can create those colors by just mixing some of this green with a little bit of white and a tiny bit of your permanent rose. So if you want to do another version of this or use it for another project, you're welcome to do that. So I'm going to use um, some canvas board today. This one was a little bit off with the proportions. So I'm just going to grid out any of the areas to make the proportions match your 10 by 12 canvas. If you're using 12 by 16, you can just extend it beyond these little borders to fit your canvas size. These can also have more tulips if you wanna add them to it. You can change the colors however you'd like and you know just have fun with it and be creative. I'm sure you'll come up with something really great for your design. So you'll also want a pencil just for sketching in some of the tulip shapes, some assortments of brushes here. This was just the kit that I offer in my website or on my website, but you can use whatever you have on hand. You'll want some paper towels and a cup of water for rinsing out your brushes. So if everything is good to go, I will go ahead and get started. So I'm just gonna set up my space really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so you notice in the background that we have this kind of gradient or ombre effect happening with it. So we're gonna start with this type of pale blue and then we're gonna slowly transition down to this darker green color right here. So if you want, you can mix up that green with your other colors, or you can just go based on what I'm doing today. Again, you don't have to do the exact color scheme here. So I'm going to use my filbert brush. This is that rounded brush. Any larger brush you have on hand will work. So uh, actually a larger brush might be easier for putting in these bigger spaces here. So for this one, this is just the biggest you know, one I have in the kit. So I'm going to dip it in my water to soften the bristles. And just tap off that excess on your cup of water. And the first color we're going to mix is this really light blue. It has a tiny bit of green to it. So it's kind of like a minty blue color. So we're gonna take a little bit of our white, tiny, tiny bit of our blue. And it's easier just to go from light to dark with this so you're not dipping into too much of your other paints when you don't need to. So that's a nice color right there. I'm also just gonna add a tiny bit of yellow just to give it more of that green tint that we're looking for. And it's just barely a color difference. It doesn't really show up as well on camera, but it has a slight green shade to it. I'll add just a tiny bit more blue. Okay, so once you have that mixed up really well, you can start adding in your color. So I'm just going to start with the top right here. And if you're using stretched canvas, you will have a little edge on it. So if you want to, you can just pull that color around. It tends to build up on those sides anyway. So sometimes it's easier just to use that to fill in that white little edge of your canvas right here. Or you can mask that out if you want to create a nice white border around it as well. So the goal of our background is just to create this kind of hazy looking background where we have this idea that there's other 
little stems and leaves behind these tulips just to give it more of like an atmosphere. Otherwise, these tulips are just going to look like they're sitting on the surface of the canvas with no type of space or like atmosphere around it. So this is just a way of like tricking the viewer <laughs> into thinking there's more happening than there actually is. So we're just going to keep pulling this down. And as we work our way further down the canvas, we're going to add just a little bit more of our blue and yellow to it. So this is where we're going to get this minty green color right here. Actually, it's like right about here. And we're going to use that wet and wet technique. If you've done my other classes, you're probably aware of how this works. But the idea is that you are blending two wet paint um, colors on the canvas together to create a really nice diffused look to it. So we're going to add just a little bit more blue to just part of this and a little bit more yellow. You can see that automatically changes that color to be a little bit darker. And for our transition color, we're just going to start adding this in. And you can already start creating some you know, ideas of different stems and other foliage in the background. So that's where you get these really hazy looking stems and other things. So don't be afraid to go off of the canvas when you're doing this part. Just to be like a little hint of color. If you want to be more intentional with it, you can use that edge of your brush and create more of a long leaf shape. So we don't want to completely cover up our blue here, but it is an easy way to create that nice transition of color. If you want to, you can go a little bit darker so you can add some more of your blue and a little bit of yellow with some of your original color. And I'm still leaving this here just in case I need to use that for blending. I'm just going to lighten that up a tiny bit. And again, while this is still damp, you can add a few areas that are slightly darker. And then you can intentionally add in some of these more specific looking lines and places. So you can just use that edge of your brush, that sharp side, and create a few little flicks of these colors here and there. Okay. So we're going to keep using this darker color as we move our way down the page or down the canvas. And this should go pretty smoothly for you. I know sometimes it's difficult on warmer days, your paint's gonna to wanna to dry faster. So if you can just be a little bit speedier with this process right here, you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble with that part. But you know, things happen, you can have a phone call or the doorbell rings. So if something like that happens, um, just make sure for one, that you clean your brush before you put it down. But two, if you're like kind of in between these sections of your canvas, if you leave just a little bit left over on the side, you can go back in with that other color and help blend that into the rest of your painting. So if you need to add more of that blue anywhere, you have that available. And another thing that you might wanna do is just keep a little bit more paint on your brush than normal, especially when we're getting into more of these warmer days. Because on more of that, um, if it's like a humid day or if it's been raining or anything, sometimes it just wants to like suck all of the moisture out of your paints. So just make sure you have a good bit of paint on your brush. And then you might also need to just dip your water or dip your brush in your water every now and then just to make sure that the paint isn't settling into those bristles. But we're not quite in the summer yet. I think I'm just dreaming of that right now. But we've had some really sunny days recently that's giving me hope. So as we work our way down the canvas, 
you can start adding in some of your really dark colors for this last half of it. And the reason for this is that we want to make sure that we have some idea of like shadow and light. So we, we would imagine that the closer you get to the ground, the darker it's going to be in this area. There's also going to be shadows forming from all those leaves and flowers to create this darker section. So to do that, we're going to take a little bit more of our blue, a little bit more yellow. You can see it's already creating this dark pigment right here. But we've used a lot of white with our colors, so I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that. I'm like, this would be fine, but I know I'm going to have some other muted colors within my design. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this pink color right here and just tone that down a little bit so it's more of like a grayish green. So you can see that okay. So the way that that works is that green and red are complementary colors. So they're on opposite sides of the color wheel. When you place them side by side, they make them more vibrant. So just these green, and this is really more of a magenta color, but since it's in that red range, these two colors will stand out next to each other. But as soon as you mix them in, they're gonna start to neutralize or mute the, the colors. So I like to use this in a lot of my classes just to teach some basic color theory for you. But um, for example, if you're using this green right here, it's very synthetic. So if you ever need to mute that color, just use something within that red range, even if it's this pink color right here. And you can get a very similar color to what we're about to use right now. If you add a little bit of white to it, then it's almost identical. It's just a slightly lighter version of this one right here. So you're welcome to use that green however you'd like. And for most of your colors, when you're getting them straight out of a tube, um, really with any art supplies, it usually needs to be mixed with other colors to really get that vibrancy that you want out of it and that like richness of colors. So that's why some of that just simple complementary color mixing goes a long way. And there's all sorts of other color theory that I can throw in here, but <laughs> I don't want to do that tonight. <laughs> it's too much for most classes that are only about two hours long, but I like to sprinkle it in there when I can. So here we're getting some of those dark colors. If you want, you can still neutralize that with a little bit more red. So I'm going to just mix a little bit more because I didn't have enough. I was talking too much. So I can mix some of my blue and yellow again with a little bit of this pink color. Add just a little bit of white to it. And we're just going to fill this in in this bottom half. Now you can see here that now that this other color is drying, it doesn't want to mix together very well. So what we can do is take a little bit of that original color, if you have any on your hands right here, or you can just add a little bit of white to part of this other new mixture. And then you can just pull that color into this little section here where those colors meet. And your brush might be feeling a little bit dry, so you can just add a little bit of water to it. Tap off any of that excess water on your paper towel. And then you can go back right over these spots and that makes it a little bit easier to blend as well. We're not looking for like big globs of paint or anything. We're just wanting to have a nice kind of hazy looking background for our design. Oops, there's some blue on that. Let me take that off. Here we go. And I'm just being really loose with this because I know that when we're adding in our flowers, I want to have some sort of movement within it so they don't look like they're just sitting right here. 
So we're going to do a lot of curving lines that swoop out in other directions, just so it looks like there's you know, more going on with our painting. So I need a little bit more of a transition of color right here too. So I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm just going to remix this color right here, that minty color. I'll take some of this original blue that we have, a little bit of yellow, tiny bit of white, tiny bit of blue. That's actually pretty close. We'll just pull some of that down into this other color. I'm just barely using any pressure with my hand to But part of the tricky thing with acrylics is you're always battling that drying time. So, you know, sometimes you just have to work a little bit faster or sometimes like if your paint's kind of starting to form this in between state, you just need to let it completely dry before you start adding more paint. Because eventually that bottom layer is gonna start drying and when you're brushing over it, you're gonna pull up a whole section. So your brain's gonna tell you to keep loading globs and globs of paint on there but it's not really gonna work until that section dries. So if you find yourself doing that where suddenly you have like a divot in your paints, just let it sit and dry for about five or so minutes and then you can paint right over it. Okay, so that looks like a pretty nice transition of color right there. You can always add a few other little marks of little foliage and branches and things up here if you wanted to. But I'm just gonna leave it like that. Now, for some reason while you're painting too, especially when we get to this area where things start to really overlap, you'll notice that we have some of that original teal color that we're gonna use to pull that background color back into this bottom design. So um, if you feel like all of this just turns into like one big blob of green, we're gonna do a few things with our brush to make sure that we can separate these little leaves and stems. So for right now, I'm just gonna let this sit and dry. So I'm gonna clean off my brush really well. And just try your best not to leave your brushes sitting in your cup else they'll get damaged. Once you're done really cleaning your brush, you can just set it out on your paper towel or on your table, wherever you need to put it. And then at the end, when you're cleaning your brushes, you can just use regular Dawn dish soap or washing up liquid and um, just try and store them upright in this cup or something similar. And that will preserve them for other painting sessions and little activities that you might wanna do for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to be back in just a few minutes. If you want to speed up this process, you can use a hair dryer on a cold setting and that will get rid of any of that paint that's still drying, but I will be right back. Okay, so my paint is now pretty much bone dry now. And the next step that we're going to do is just put in a few larger, large leaves. And um, we're also going to map out where our tulips are. So um, just to make it a little less I would say organized with it. If you want to make it look more like rugged nature, we're going to put in these first and then we'll add our, our tulips on top. That way you're not thinking so hard about the direction of them. So I'm going to follow this pretty closely, but you can always change it up as you go. And we're going to create some of these like mid-tone kind of leaf green colors. And uh, eventually we'll add some pops of these like electric purples and blues and more of this rusty orange color later on. But for right now, we're just gonna keep it simple. So I'm going to use this angled brush here. I like using this because then I can create some of these points that we have for our leaves. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky where these like points look more like <laughs> nubs. So if that happens, you can always switch back and forth between your two round brushes here 
and your angled brush. So just like before, we're gonna dip our brush in our water. And we're gonna mix up a green color. So of course you can always include this uh, other green within your design. I'm just gonna stick closely to these two colors for right now. So I'm gonna take some of my blue, a little bit of yellow. We'll take a decent amount of it because I know we're gonna use some of it later on. So this will immediately create a leaf green color. These paints are pretty thick. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of water from my brush and my cup. And I'm just gonna tap that into this little puddle of paint that we're making. And our yellow tends to be really transparent. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of white just to give it a little bit more body to it so it can cover up some of those darker areas. And then I want to mute this color down a little bit. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of this permanent rose. So it's more of like a brownish green. That way we have some of that rusty color that we'll add in later and some of those red tones and pinks. And so this little pop of that permanent rose in this green is gonna help everything else stand out. Yeah, just a tiny bit more white, like it's just barely any. Okay, so once you have that loaded up, you can just press your little uh, brush down, or sometimes you can use it across like the side of your paper plates to get rid of any big blobs of paint but you want a decent amount on your brush for this part. So I'm just gonna start like right along here where I know I have this large leaf. So I'm gonna start with the end of my brush where it has that tip to it. And then I'm just gonna press down and pull. You'll probably have to load up your brush a few times just to make sure that you have a lot on there. That will keep those bristles from pulling apart on you when you're trying to create some of these thin lines. And just like before, if you want to, you can use one of your small rounds. I'm just gonna dip that in my water. And you can load that up with the same paint. And if you feel like you want more of a point to your piece, you can just use the very end of your brush to extend that line out a little bit. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep adding some of these larger shapes in there. Again, don't be afraid to go off the edge of the canvas. It's just gonna make it look like this image is extending beyond that area. And this should cover pretty easily over your background. If it doesn't, we can always do a second layer with some of our other colors that we're gonna lay on top. If you need to go ahead and dip your brush in your water if you feel like it's starting to dry out a little bit, and then you just keep loading up your brush really well with that green paint. If you want, you can make some larger little loops that are going off there, like a little curved line to make it look like some of these are pulling forward.
have some other little loops kind of coming off from here. And again, just make sure your brush is loaded with paint if you need to add some more water because um, some of the texture from your background might want to show the canvas, like the tooth of the canvas through there. So it's just an easy way to create those lines that you need. So I'm just using that sharp edge of my brush for some of these thin lines. Let's see, let me do one or more little things. I don't wanna to go too crazy with this because I wanna know where my other parts of my design are going. I had some of these kind of looping in the background too. So a lot of the tulips have these long and skinny leaves surrounding them. So we're just gonna do a few more of these here or there. That's looking pretty good right now. Yeah, I think I'll leave that just like that. If you need to, again, you can use that small round brush to clean up any of these top parts of your long leaves here, if you wanna just fill that out a little bit. This gives you a little bit more control over it. The nice thing too about this painting though, is you don't have to be really particular with the design. It's supposed to be abstracted. So um, don't feel like you have to tighten up too much with it while you're working. But I know that's like easier said than done. Okay, so you can use that small brush to clean up any areas that you need to. Sometimes you just need to cover over any of that canvas that still wants to show through. I'm using canvas board, so this is always gonna be a little bit more textured than stretched canvas. But, you know, just take your time with it. If you need to pause the video, you can, and you can always reach out if you have questions. So I'm just gonna let this sit and dry for a few minutes. You can use your hair dryer again if you wanna speed up that process. And I will be right back. Okay, so now that's dried to the touch, we can start sketching in our tulips. So I tried to do a variety of shapes just so they don't all look exactly the same. But you'll start to really look for these points to them. So you can see on this top edge how it looks like it's starting to open up a little bit. And on some of the other ones, they're more like how you would see a rosebud. So we can have a variety of shapes. Um, here you can add as many as you'd like. The one thing I would suggest is to not have anything right in the center of your painting. You can have it just slightly off however you want. But we're trying to create movements and um, you know, keeping the viewer looking at the art for longer. So to do that, you usually wanna keep things from being right around here. So if it helps, you can put a little mark, like really lightly, and that's just a reminder to avoid that area. So I'm going to start right about here with the design. So I'm gonna create more of this bell shape right here or like a horseshoe shape just for that bottom half. I'm gonna do this dark on my <laughs> design here, but you can always go a little bit lighter with it since graphite is sometimes tricky to cover up with paint. We're gonna start with this curved shape here, just right along here. 
And then it helps to just find these points. So you can see right here where there's a point. You can pull that down. And then you can find this other point towards the front. And another one that leads around here. You're almost creating like a, a really generic looking tulip shape in the beginning where you have these really easy reminders of this like crown top to it. Now to round this out a little bit, we're gonna create just a really soft line in the background. And that's gonna help us determine where that other petal is going to be. So hopefully you can see that okay. I'll do this other one right here too. So this one has more of a curve to it. So don't be afraid to cover over some of these little leaf shapes that we just made. Those were just to help push that color in the background. Same as before, this one has a really sharp point in the front. So sometimes it helps to plot that in first. And then you can see how you need to adjust the rest of your design. So again, look for these points. So you can see one here along this side, there's this really strong one over here where it kind of pulls out a little bit further. Like that, you know, that's kind of loose. And then the one in the back is also a point like that. Now we're gonna adjust this a little bit as we're painting. So some of these might change shape slightly while you're adding in your colors. Another one I'll add is right about here for my design. This one is kind of the opposite effect where we have more of a top ridge to it. So we're gonna start again with this almost like horseshoe curve right here. And then you can find this point again. So I'm just gonna quickly sketch this in so you can see where this is at. I mean, that one's a little bit harder to see right there. So hopefully you can see that okay. And then the last one is tucked behind this one here. So I just wanted to have some that were overlapping. And we're just going to do more of that traditional, it's really fluted towards the top. So you can create a really sharp curve right here where it's like, it's not fully opened yet. I guess none of these are really fully opened yet, but this one has more of that like traditional looking petal. So I'm just going to have that side by side. And this one has a strong mark or a line that runs down. So you can see the side of this petal here. So you can just create a little curved line. And then also that point that's back here. So again, just take your time with this part. So you can see that okay right here. So I just created that little guideline for myself to know where that highlighted area is going to be. And then sometimes it helps to create just a simple line that runs the stem down. Now on some of these, I have the stem that's going into these leaves in the front. So I'm just going to paint them or draw them right about here. So the way that this one was split, this can actually go right into the spot. And that way we can do some overlapping little shapes on top of it. But then here we have this one that's running pretty much down to the end of our, or the bottom of our design. So I'm just curving that slightly to give it a little bit of movement. You can see both of those okay. I know this one's a little bit harder to see right now. So I'm basically having that stem right between these two shapes right here. Okay. 
This other one is pretty much in the front too, so we can just curve that line as a reference. So just make yourself a little mark there. And then this one looks like it's pushing towards the back. So we're only going to have that go right to about this point here on our design. Now, if you manage to pull that all the way down, that's fine. We'll just do some other foliage and other leaves in the front of that. So don't feel like you're you know, doing anything wrong with that part. Okay. So that is pretty much where we're at with this. This is looking really good. And we can start putting in our base color for our tulips. So what I'm gonna do just to prevent this green from kind of contaminating these bright colors that I want here, um, I'm going to switch my water out. Now, normally I wouldn't do that, but this is pretty dense <laughs> in here. You can see it's pretty thick. So I don't want to mess up or dilute any of these vibrant colors that we want. So just give yourself a minute or two to get some fresh water and then we'll get started again. So now I have some fresh water, so that's not going to cause any problems with our petals. And this is where I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to switch between the small number six round in case I need to get into these little areas of our tulips. And then I'm also going to use this small flat brush. This is the number six. So if you have something similar to that in your collection, go ahead and use that for your design. And what I'll do with this one is I'm going to use that broad side of it to fill in some of these larger petals and then I can turn it to that sharp side. And then if I really need something with a point, I'll switch to this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create like a base color for our tulips. And for this part, we're just going to do a thin coat of it so you can still see some of your outline throughout it. And we're looking for almost like a bubblegum <laughs> pink color. So you can see part of that shining through in just a few spots. So this will all mostly be covered up with several little layers and colors of these oranges and yellows and violets. So the first thing I'm going to do is dip my brush in my water, tap off that excess water. And we're gonna take some of our white and you don't really need a lot of this paint, just enough to cover these shapes. Some of our white and a little bit of our permanent rose. And we'll create this really pretty bubble gum or cotton candy pink color. We're putting a significant amount of white in it too because we're trying to cover up some of these darker shapes on here. So that white is gonna be some of the most opaque paint that you can use with this. And if I want, I can add just a little pop of yellow, like barely any yellow. I can, there we go. Just to give it a little bit more vibrancy. This is more of like a cool toned pink right here. Okay. So I've got that mixed up and I can just start painting in this overall shape. And if you need to, you can give yourself a little bit of space between some of your lines if you need to see that reference. But I'll show you how to get some of those lines back if you lose them. So on these outer lines to create that nice curve to them, you're going to really load up your brush with paint. And while you're trying to go around that edge, just press down a little bit harder. And when you're pulling the brush across the canvas, it should cover that pretty well. It's almost like it creates a little tiny wall that you can press that paint out. So then you don't feel like your bristles of your brush are coming apart. If that happens, just load up your brush a little bit more with paint and just press down again a little bit harder. And I'm doing this faster, but you can take your time with this part. And just follow those little edges that we created. So you still should see a little bit of your outline shining through. If not, like I said, I'll help you bring that back. Mm 
Okay, we're just doing a really light coat. So this is actually, it looks white on screen for some reason, but it's definitely more of a pink here. So I'm gonna load up my brush again, add just a little bit more pink to it. And I'm going to just continue with this other one here. So if you need to, you can always switch your brush if you need to get into some of those other spaces. And that should cover pretty well over all those darker colors. So just take your time. And then I'm just going to do this on every single one of my petals. Okay, so after you have plotted those in, you can still see, again, some of your outline shining through, hopefully. If not, we'll go step by step through part of this process again. And um, it's no problem at all, because we're going to do several layers on there. We just want to make sure our base layer is enough to cover over this background. So I'm going to clean my brush really well. And I'm going to show you how to mix this color that we want for our stems. That way we know roughly where they're at. After those are plotted in, we'll add some more foliage using that like yellow green color and we'll slowly build this bottom half of our painting. So we'll bounce back and forth between the tulips and this section here. So everything has a chance to dry completely. 
So I'm going to use my small round brush, this number six that we've been using. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow. I'll just bring it right over here. Okay, a little bit of my blue. If you've been using this other green, you can incorporate some of that in it as well. We're getting a similar color to what we have here. We're just gonna lighten that up with a little bit of white. A little bit more white than that. And since this is a very bright green, we're gonna dilute that with just a little bit of our pink color. You can see it's creating more of like a brownish green. Add a little bit more white to it. And the reason why we're going lighter with this is because we want to make sure that our stems stand out against all this other green. So while you're working, um, you can give yourself a challenge, especially with this bottom half, with how many shades of green that you can add to your design. I almost dropped my thing. So I'm just going to make sure that's close. Add just a tiny bit more white to part of it. So I can have a lighter area and a darker area. And then I'm also gonna roll my brush just to get rid of any of those excess globs of paint that might be on there. Now, if you feel like this is kind of thick, you can use a little bit of water from your cup and your brush, and you can just dilute that paint a little bit more. And you can usually tell if you're like spinning it and it doesn't really wanna move, just take a little bit more water on it. Um, from your brush and just spin that. And that's gonna give you a lot more control over some of these thin lines we're gonna be creating. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll it to load that up. And we're just gonna follow the path of our stems. So on the top half of it, I like to just flute that out a little bit. I know that's hard to see right there. You can see in this part right here, where it's just barely fluted where it connects with the rest of the stem. And you're just going to take your brush and create a nice thin line. Now, don't worry if that line isn't perfect because we can always add in some other foliage around it. I'm just going to have that go right into this section right here. Now, if you want to add some other little pops of yellow, green, and other places, you can do that like that. But for right now, we're just trying to put in our stems. Same thing here, you're gonna keep loading up your brush with that paint. We're gonna do the same thing up here where we just flute this out just a tiny bit. I'm just gonna turn my canvas a little bit. I'm left-handed, so everything's backwards. And you can just turn it to make yourself more comfortable to connect these lines. So sometimes it helps if you can draw one big line, you can do that. But since we're using a smaller brush, it's sometimes easier to just connect those dots together. So you can split that stem into several little lines that just pull together. And it gives you quite a bit more control over it. I know straight lines are never fun to do with paint if you're starting painting. And even when you have a lot of experience with painting, it can be kind of intimidating. So just do the best you can with that part. And then I just have one more that's leading down here. Okay. So after that, if you wanna incorporate some of this lighter color into there, you can always make it a little bit darker if you want to add more green in spots from whatever other part of the paint you have on your canvas or on your paper plate, not your canvas. And if you need to, again, you can add some water to it to make it a little bit more fluid. Just pulling some of this other color from over here. And with this lighter green, we can add in some little highlights and other details within our design just to change things up a little bit. So on some of these pieces, if you want to create a slightly lighter line leading out, 
You can do that. You can separate some of these larger leaves if you want to add just a little block of color right there, since this is really just um, an abstracted floral piece. Add some little bits of color around here if you want. You can follow the path of some of these other ones that let out. If you just put that side by side on there. And just keep loading up your brush with paint and making sure it's not too dried out. And that should give you some of these nice thin lines that we're looking for. If you feel like it's creating a lot of texture and it doesn't want to move on your canvas, add a little bit more water to your brush with your paint. And then that will cover over any of the other texture. You can go right over those spots to thin that out. The other option is just, you know, take your time with it, let things dry a little bit faster than or longer than normal. And then when you try and go over with another color, it'll be a lot easier. So you're not pulling over a paint that's still damp. And if there's parts that like over here, this line right here is crossing. If I wanna highlight that line, I can add a little bit of this lighter green for just part of it. And that's gonna help push that color forward. It's also gonna push our um, tulips towards the back too. So if like this one is coming from this little area here, we can have some other lines that are showing that it's connected to this part of the stem. Okay, it's looking good. I just add a little bit of yellow to part of these two, just in a few spots. You can water it down a little bit more if you'd like. That way it can pull into some of the other color. And this is known as glazing, where you're doing almost like a watercolor effect with your paints. If you need to, you can go back in with that darker green and connect those two together. I'll just see how that dries down. You can see that, okay. Some of that got in my tulip, but that's fine. Okay, so that's looking really good. We've got a lot of our highlighted yellow green areas. And if we want, we can start adding in some of our peachy colors. So we're gonna switch from this part of our canvas up to our tulips again. So if you are more comfortable with waiting for that to dry, I highly suggest doing that or using your hair dryer. So you're not accidentally like putting your arm <laughs> in your green paints. That's usually where I'll have like little marks on my <laughs> arm right here and on my forearm. Uh, if you have an easel, you don't have to worry about that so much. So I'm just gonna let this sit and dry for just a minute. Just kidding, I'm gonna add this line and then I'm gonna do that. And we'll start on our tulips again. Okay. Okay, so this is pretty much dry to the touch again. There might be a few spots on that that are a little bit damp, but it's manageable. <laughs> so we're gonna start adding in some of these peachy and light yellow colors for the bottom half of our tulips. And that's usually, um, especially on red tulips and like more of these pink tulips, they have a lot of peach as like a highlight under here. So normally with the flower, it would probably be a darker color, but um, to create that contrast to make it look like these are opening up, we're gonna leave this bottom half a little bit lighter. So for this part, I'm gonna use the same round brush here, this number six. If you need to, if you're trying to do really delicate work, you can switch to this number zero round. Um, I'll probably only do that towards the very end. 
just to keep everything kind of loose because we're still doing a lot of color blocking right now. We don't want to go straight into details without having all of our other information put in first. So I'm going to dip my brush in my water. We're going to take a little bit of my yellow. Right here. Some of our white. You can have some of that pink color if you have it left over too, because we are going to add a little bit of red. I keep saying red, a little bit of our pink, our permanent rose. So I like to do kind of a darker color and then right beside it, I'll take a little scoop of that and mix it with some more white. So then we have two colors just side by side that we can use at the same time. So it's like a nice, like it almost looks like orange sherbet <laughs> color that we have for this. Okay, so that one's just a little bit darker. And I'm gonna start with a lighter color just to show you where to block in these spots. So we're doing really small brush strokes here. You can see how we're gonna create that texture of the petals. So I'm going to start with some curved lines that are heading towards these points that we have up here. You can have a few that go around the edge. We're pushing a lot of that red color or pinky color back. I'm just going to start with this more of this lighter color. So I'm going to just bring a little bit of that more into this bottom half of this other painting. Again, we're doing these curved brush strokes to follow the shape of it. So we're always trying to trick the viewer into thinking that these are actually round, even though this is a flat painting. So there's so many different kinds of illusionary things you can do with art to make it feel like it's coming to life. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's a really fun way to do art. <laughs> Seems like realism, like with art, has made a big comeback recently on Instagram and YouTube and stuff, where people are tricking uh, the viewers into seeing if something's real or not. It's just great because a lot of that takes a lot of work and practice and technical experience. So it makes me happy. <laughs> Even though I like more of these abstracted paintings too, these are always really fun. And they take plenty of technical skill too. Okay, so I'm just mimicking the shape of it. So we have these curved lines that are going around our tulips. And then if I want to, I can start with some of my darker color that we have next to it where it's more of that darker, like rusty, or it's like more of a saturated orange sherbet color. And we can just put that in a few spots as well. I'm gonna use this one a little bit more sparingly. You can always add more in later on when we're working. And that's already making these tulips pop up the page a little bit. So if I want to, I can make this a little bit darker. So I'm going to add some more of our permanent rose to part of it and a little bit more yellow. And we're going to get this kind of rusty red or like a raw sienna color. And this is a great thing to include in parts of the bottom half of our painting. You see like there's just a few little flicks of this color throughout the bottom half of the design. And that's mostly just to mimic what's happening in our tulips. So there's some sort of relationship between these other parts of the painting and a little bit more like balance with the colors. So I'm just gonna do a few flicks of this color here or there. We'll use it kind of sparingly. 
use part of it on your stems if you want. And this is just one of those paintings where the color becomes an important part of the piece, where the design is quite simple. So it's all these little bits of color that are tying everything together. So if you want, you can put just a tiny bit of that color somewhere in your tulips. I'm just going to use that in just tiny little spots. Need a little bit more water on my brush to get rid of some of that texture. So again, if you feel like your, your brush doesn't want to move across the canvas, just add a little bit more water to it or a little bit more paint. It'll save you a lot of that headache from working with things that don't want to move. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's turning out really good. We're going to switch our color now. So go ahead and clean off your brush. If you can believe it, we're more than halfway through with this. We only have a few more steps. Um, and then we can just take our time tidying up some of these colors and slowing it down a little bit with the work so we can see exactly where we want to add these pops of blues and purples. So I'm going to start adding in some of our shadows. So I don't want us to lose that before we add in all these other textures. So to add in the shadow, we're gonna take a little bit, if you have some of this white and pink mixture left, you can do that. Or you can just take some of your white, a little bit of your pink, tiny bit of blue, a little bit more pink. We're gonna create a really pretty vibrant color. Add a little bit more pink to it as well just to make sure that it's covering over some of those darker areas of our canvas. And you should get this really pretty magenta or hot pink color. It's almost like a fuchsia color. I get the pinks kind of mixed together <laughs> sometimes. So we can start adding this in, in this little section right here. So just look for the darkest areas of our tulips. You can see it starts to create a dividing line right about here. And right about here. So you can add a little bit of this color running down. Again, you can load up your brush if you need to with a little bit more of that water. If it feels like it's sticking in places. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. We're gonna add in a little bit of this color. And you can see where it's starting to divide down here a little bit. So I'm just gonna add some right here. And if you need to, you can wait a little bit longer on the bottom half of your painting because sometimes if you're combining yellow and like a purple or a violet color, it's gonna create a brown since they're complementary colors. So you can just work on this top half before this dries because that started doing it right here. You can see how that changed. Now a little bit of that is fine and that's like normal. You would see that in the flower, but if it starts to like overpower the rest of the painting, then that is gonna be a problem, I think for your colors. Now, when we add in more of our pink later, we'll divide this down a little bit more. So right now we're just looking for this darker color. Okay, I'm gonna go right here. This one's a little bit different. We have it around this outer edge right here. And then this one's pretty dramatic because then you have this little squiggly line for the petal that's opening. Okay. 
That's looking pretty good. Okay, so from there, I'm just going to add a little bit more pink to this mixture. So I can just put some of that side by side in case you need to go back into that other color. And roll your brush again, just to make sure that you're getting any big globs of paint off of your brush so it can be nice and pointed. And from here, this is where we're gonna add this hot pink color. So we're gonna follow a lot of that same line. We're adding it towards that middle section and the top just to blend those colors together. But then we're also gonna use that to divide some of the petals. So like right along here, we have this pop of a pink color here and along the side. And it's gonna look a lot better once we add in our highlights in just a little bit. So it looks messy for a little while before everything really comes together. And that's how a lot of flower designs are with acrylic paints. They look kind of bad before they, they look good. But the colors on this are really standing out and that's what I was wanting. So if you need to, you can add a little bit of white to this if you feel like it's too much of the same color. There we go, that's more of that pink color that we're looking for. You can just add that wherever you want that to show up on your tulip design. Now this one also has some lines running down it right here. So I'm just gonna follow that. Keep loading up your brush when you need to. Add a little bit of pink around here. That's looking pretty good. Now, if you want to, you can use some of that color mixed with a little bit of your purple again. So if you add some of that permanent rose with a tiny bit of our blue, you can get that really pretty electric color. And you can just add that in a few spots on the bottom half of your painting as well. And since we're not adding any colors that aren't part of this design into it, it's like if you were going to try and use a color like this out of a tube, it's going to look weird. But since we're using all of these colors together mixed within our painting, it will make sense. So a lot of these colors you can just mix on your own without buying them as separate colors. You just have to get like the right hue of it. Like if you're using this hot pink, it's gonna look a lot different than if you mix just red and blue together. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I just don't like for people to spend money on things that they don't need to. But it's your money, you do what you want with it. Now we're gonna add just a few little darker colors. So if we want to, we can add just a little bit more blue to this mixture right here. You can see it creates like a lavender, like a nice periwinkle color. And you can add that into a few spots as well on your design. So I use this pretty sparingly. I just had it as a few little highlights here or there. And 
then I also just added it in a few spots on the bottom half of my painting. This really makes those colors pop. So after that, I'm just gonna clean off my brush really well. And we're almost done, if you can believe it. <laughs> so I'm going to add in more of this like bubblegum pink in a few spots. I feel like some things are just a little bit washed out in places. So I'm going to use a little bit of this original color. If you need to remix it, you're just gonna take some white with a tiny bit of pink. I'm just gonna make this slightly darker. So some kind of mid-tone color that isn't already on your piece. And I think I'm gonna add just a tiny hint of yellow to it again. So it's more of like a peach pink. Yeah, that's the color I'm looking for. So yeah, just a tiny, tiny hint of yellow is gonna make that the color that we're looking for here. And we don't need a lot of this. We just need a little bit of it. And we're gonna put this in just a few spots right around here, just to bring some of these textures down and our design. So if something looks a little bit too bright or maybe sometimes it looks a little bit washed out, you can use that color to just push that back. But you can spend all day just working on these two lips until you um, have it exactly how you want it to be. So we're just trying to get it pretty close to the original design. And sometimes you need to bring back some of these other colors like this peachy yellow. Gonna add that in a few more spots. So you can add a little bit of this lighter yellow, it's like a pastel yellow that we had originally here. Again, we're following the shape of our tulips, so we're curving those lines again just so they look like they're mimicking that roundness of the tulip. Add a little bit more of this hot pink back into the color. I feel like I lost some of that too. Sorry, that's my stomach. 
It always does this when I'm on camera. I swear I eat. It just always wants to talk whenever <laughs> I'm recording a session. It drives me crazy. So that brought back that color that we're looking for. That looks really good now. I just lost some of those bright colors that we want to have for our tulips. Same thing, you can always add a little pop of color here or there if you want to really make that stand out. And you'll notice that it gets kind of messy right around here. So I'm gonna show you how to add just a few little pops of this teal color that we used for our background, just so it's not distracting you from the rest of the piece. It's also gonna give us a chance to dry down before we add in our final highlights. So we are very close to being finished now. Now you may have some of this already still left on your plates. If not, you can just use the same small round brush. You can take a little bit of your white with a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of yellow. And that will get you that same color. So I just have some of it right here. And you can look in between. So this is known as looking for negative spaces. So you're looking in between where our positive shapes are, like our stems and leaves are. So right about here would be a good place to add in a little bit of a negative shape. Oops, that's kind of light. Let me make that a little bit darker. There we go. I still don't like that. I'm going to add a little bit more blue and yellow. It's close. It's just a little jarring. My eyes go straight to that. So I'm just adding a little bit more blue and yellow and a little bit of white if I need to. There we go. And you can just add that wherever you feel like you need that. Just make sure you have the brush loaded up pretty well with paint. Also an easy way to clean up any lines that you don't like. This one's not very pretty, let me fix that. And you can add as many of these as you want for your design. This kind of ties everything back together. So the last thing we're going to do is just clean up our brush really well. And we're gonna go in with just some straight light paint and add just a few little bits of highlight for our tulips. And that should be good. You can always change or add more of these textures as you're going, but just so this doesn't go on forever tonight, I will just show you that. So we're gonna dip right into our white paint with our same brush. And we're just gonna use the very end of our brush to create some highlights. And just dipping right into your white paint. And if it blends with a little bit of those other colors, that's fine too. You can always bring that back if you need to.
Again, just take your time. I know we're kind of speed painting right now, but you can always break this up into different sessions if that's easier. Or I often will work on my painting for a little while, take the day off and then come back in and look at what I might wanna change on it the next day. So as long as you are preserving your paints, you can always put them back in those little paint pots that I gave you and that bag. And as long as it's airtight, those paints will stay for a long time. That looks pretty close to the original. I can always add in some darker areas again, maybe right around here if I wanted to, but this is pretty close. So you also have that image if you need to use it as a reference. And if you have any questions while you're working, just let me know. I'll happily jump on Zoom and go over it in real time. If you wanna show off your final designs, I'd love to see how they look. So you can just send a photo or email it, however you wanna do that. And I hope you enjoyed the class. So normally the last thing you would do is just initial in that bottom right corner of your painting. And oops, I'm seeing something that I wanna add. <laughs> I was about to finish it, but I noticed we need a little pop of this yellow. That's what's missing. So if you want to, before we stop the session, you can take a good amount of yellow on your brush the teeny tiny bit of white. I'm just gonna do a little pop of yellow here or there. That's what we needed. Okay, I'm happy now. <laughs> okay, so again, you can initial that bottom right corner of your canvas. Sometimes people will sign the back or the edge of it. You don't have to use paint for it. You can always use a paint pen or something different to sign it. But again, if you wanna share it, I'd love to see how they turned out. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. So uh, thank you again.